Next up on WTV, Junior Class Rings, Finding Blood Pressure Manually, this week's edition of Trivia, and today's Sports Minute. WTV's daily update starts now. Good morning, Red Hawk Nation. Today is Monday, September 30th, and I'm Kyle Strickland with today's daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. Johnson's met with juniors on Wednesday to discuss class rings. WTV's Stone Weber has more. The window to buy class rings is now open. Jostens, the maker of the class rings, recently gave the junior class a presentation on what options are available. For students debating on whether to buy one, staff member Regina Booth thinks class rings are worth the investment. Good to look back and just to show you know, what I did because on my class ring I have a lot of the activities that I did in high school. So um, looking back, seeing it now, you know, just seeing how, just the different things that I did and then I can talk to my kids about it. Senior Kennedy Williams is interested in getting a class ring and believes it's a way to reflect on high school in a positive way. I would say yes because I think high school is a time that should be remembered and a class ring is something you could always have and you'll cherish because it's a lot of money so you're going to keep track of it and so it'll keep you reminding of like the times you had in high school. Jossens will be in the cafeteria tomorrow from 12.10 to 2.35 and on Wednesday from 12.10 to 6. For Wingspan TV, I'm Stone Weber. Some students only get their blood pressure taken at the doctor's office, but in health science students get a hands-on approach. WTV's Trinity Williams has the story. Usually when you go to the doctor, they have an automatic machine that takes blood pressure. But in Stephen Fryer's health science class, students are learning an eight-step process to manually taking blood pressure on other students. There are times when um, initially it was kind of hard to learn and hear it and you don't understand like how to put it on, put the cuff on fast and what you're actually listening for. But when that um, aha moment happens, when they actually hear it for the first time, it's really rewarding. For students, such as Riley Reed, taking blood pressure is a fun way to do a hands-on learning. It's not that hard to take people's blood pressure because, well, once you start doing it, it takes you a couple times, but then after you do it, it's really easy to get it. My favorite part about taking people's blood pressure is probably um, the conversations that we have, like in my class when we take each other's, it's really funny and fun to do. Reporting for WTV, I'm Trinity Williams. On this week's edition of Trivia, WTV's TJ Krilowitz tests students' knowledge on football. Hello and welcome to Wingspan Trivia. I'm your host, TJ Krilowitz, and today we're going to be testing students' knowledge on Texas football. Okay, can you tell me how many points are in a touchdown? Seven. Oh, six. Six. Extra point is one. How many points do you get from a touchdown? Seven. Seven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Six. Six. Okay. Okay, can you tell me how many points do you get from a touchdown? Uh, six. How many points do you get from a touchdown? Six. Can you tell me how many points do you get from a touchdown? Seven. Seven? No, no, six. And then the field goal one is one. All right, how long is a football field in yards? A hundred. A hundred? hundred and ten. A hundred? Uh, hundred and... 20. I think 100. 100. What two college teams play in the Red River Showdown every year? Oklahoma and Texas. Texas and Oklahoma? Texas and Oklahoma. OU and Texas. Reporting for WTV, this is TJ Krolitz. WTV's Walker Shippey gives you a recap of volleyball on today's Sports Minute. In their ninth district game of the season, girls volleyball matched up against the Lebanon Trail Trailblazers on Friday. Senior Jenna Winnis helped give the team a four-set victory over Lebanon Trail with 16 kills. The team started off slow, losing the first set by 10 points. However, the Red Hawks put up a strong fight in the second and third sets, winning by two and five points respectively. The Red Hawks finished the game in the final set, putting up the final 25 points, winning the game 3-1. The win knocks down the Trailblazers from a tied first position spot with the Red Hawks and slots the girls as the sole first place team in District 9 5A standings. The team is looking to continue their nine game undefeated district winning streak as they take on the Reedy Lions tomorrow at 6.30 at the Nets. Cross Country competed on Saturday in the Carol Dragon Cross Country Classic for the boys and the McNeil Cross Country Invitational for the girls. 
The girls team finished in 11th place out of 26 competitors with a team score of 332. Top finishers for the girls include senior Amelia Howdegie with a 5,000 meter time of 1955, finishing fourth overall, and sophomore Jada Williams finishing in 14th place with a time of 2045. On the boys' side, the team finished in 5th place out of 24 teams with an overall score of 190. Top finishers for the boys include senior Jocelyn Ferguson with a 5,000 meter time of 1720, finishing 23rd overall, and senior Zach Moore finishing just behind Jocelyn with a time of 1721. Both teams compete again on October 18th at the Race at the Lake in Lynn Park in Grand Prairie, Texas. For WTV Sports, this is Walker Shippey. If you're looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. The first official FTC Cyberhawks Robotics Club meeting is Thursday after school in Mrs. Flores' room, C209. If you signed up during club fair or if you want to learn more, there will be an informational club meeting that day. There will be no open advisory on Thursday or Friday this week due to PSAT pre-admin and Red Hawk rant. That's it for today's daily update. This is Kyle Strickland for Wingspan TV.